Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. This time it's going to be from Swing It Berlin 2020. It's a Jack and Jill finals. It does not say what the level is, which I'm super excited. I don't know what to expect. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I thought about this competition right after we get into it. So let's do it! Hey. Okay, we are in business. <clears throat> uh. Live band too. <clears throat> All right, the couples I'm looking at so far um, that caught my attention, there's two of them. Uh, she had like a flowery shirt with brown and like orange. He had brown shirt on and a uh, couple, he had a black suit on. She had a white shirt with little flowers. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Okay. False alarm, they thought it was over. I love that.
right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, I think that's all of them. This might be round two. This is gonna be the critical round for me, what I look for. Okay. <clears throat> Right, I have my verdict. <clears throat> False <Fossil alarm. laughs> alarm. I love that. Everybody's like, what's up with the drummer? <laughs> That's real frustrating. Like, I'm, I'm going to the restroom. Yes. Ba -da -da -ba. Yes! Let's talk about this. All right, guys, first off, I've got to say congratulations to everybody who put themselves in this competition and actually 
tried their best. This is a scary thing to do if you're not used to com competing in front of an audience because it's not just an audience that's there, it's, you've got the internet involved, so if you mess up, it's forever out there, and it can really scar your mind in your swing dancing journey up toward perfection. And uh, I just applaud you for putting yourself out there. I've had some really embarrassing moments doing Jack and Jill's uh, and jams and things like that, and that stuff constantly lives with me. And I always salute anybody who decides to put themselves out there. With that being said, um, this was an interesting competition. I think there was a bit of an uneven nature to the levels from what I was watching. So I could assume that this was a competition where everyone was just kind of thrown into one Jack and Jill, maybe because they didn't have enough people you know, to participate. And sometimes that is the case with uh, you know, Jack and Jill's at events. It is what it is. But even in that, I like to utilize the same judging parameters that I normally would if I were to do an audition to get in the advanced or advanced plus levels at an event. I do that because the same way I would judge to put a person in those advanced classes would actually be the same reason I would put them in the top three in this type of competition where the level is so mixed where I have to find those common denominators to make a real distinction between uh, whose skill set is more perfected versus those who need to work a little bit more. So clearly the first thing I looked for was the subjective and objective aspects of Lindy Hop. And what I look for in the objective perspective is I wanna see uh, the essence of the technique. There's different ways to do the technique. There, people will call it different styles. But ultimately, I look for the objective part that makes all of our styles work. There is something that is very physical and requires a deeper understanding to manipulate it in a way so that you can dance with other people, no matter what their style is. And I look for that. Most judges will say it different ways. I like to refer to it as the word control. And First, I want to see, can the leader and the follower do their roles without interrupting each other? And do they have control of some of those more basic, fundamental Lindy Hop shapes? Swing outs, tuck turns, pass bys, classic movements, tandem Charleston. I want to see those basic things first. <clears throat> And so in doing that, I was able to clearly segment three couples uh, from everyone else just by looking for that standard. That will tell you right there that understanding the control aspect of Lindy Hop is such a critical component to getting into higher level classes and winning competitions. And the reality is, is this control part only represents a small portion of Lindy Hop that small little objective part that everyone must do in order for our styles to even work with other people's styles. And so the third place couple for me that um, was able to demonstrate this, I think this was their highest skill set. Um, there are some other things that I look for in order to get second and first place, but the third place couple had control as their main thing. And I would say it is uh, the gentleman and the follower. She, I think she had on like, yeah, she had like a black like shirt cape. <laughs> I think that's what it is. And there's like some kind of swirly pattern on it. And she has two little Princess Leia uh, buns. And he had like a black shirt with a white shirt that was under it. I loved watching them do the swing out. Their swing out was clean. What's clean mean? I could see the leader initiate and I could see the follower respond. I did not see him initiate and as the follower was responding, start getting in the way of that, right? By like just starting a new move in the middle of the swing out. I didn't really see that. I could feel as an audience member that I could see some intentionality take place and then I could see the necessary response to that with clarity, without any interruption. They were great at it. I would say that was their highest point for me that put me put, that put them in third place for me as a judge. And I liked that when they were doing tuck turns, they were using that same principle. 
I didn't see a whole bunch of movement from the leader as he's doing the tuck turn with the follower. I, I didn't see that. I, I, I don't mind if that's the style that someone is adding on to a tuck turn occasionally. But a lot of times, if they don't have this concept of control, they end up doing, I mean, they, leaders, end up doing too much movement. And you can't actually see the main point of what is happening, which is the follower's response to the call is the ultimate goal when you're watching the dance. You see the initiation and you wait so we can see the response to what just happened. And if you can do that, top three, and this couple did that. So congratulations on their dancing. I liked them. Second place for me was interesting too because this couple also had this ability. She, uh, I think this might be a dancer. I think I might know, but I'm not sure if it's her or not because I know she was in Germany. But she's got a white shirt on. It's got some flowers on it. He's got like a black jacket with a white shirt. Looks like purple shoes. I liked their set also. What I liked about them is that they could move a little bit more with that technique, with the control. They weren't just isolated to the conventional movements of like a tuck turn or a swing out. They were actually putting themselves in more difficult positions. And I think that was sometimes unintentional, which alluded to many of the qualities that these dancers had to adapt in the moment. And I look for that. I want to see something that isn't too pre-programmed. I want to see the imperfections, yet I still want to see the clarity of call and response. I'll tell you guys right now, I dance with some of the best dancers in the world and I can get what I want as a leader probably 80 to 85% of the time. And I am technically proficient. That is my skill set mixed with creativity. So I will tell you, there's a 15% chance, even with the best of the best when I dance with them, that something's gonna go off. There will be some kind of miscommunication. And I can choose to decide to say, well, it's their problem, they just need to work on their technique, and be really upset about that 15% that I feel like I'm not getting. And for me, that's not fair because I'm not actually judging or working with that person based on their strengths, their qualities. So when I judge dancers, I'm looking at how well they can work with their partner's strengths as opposed to just not working with them because of their weaknesses. And so this couple clearly had some strengths and weaknesses, but I love to see how the leader was able to adapt to certain situations. He would start a move, the follower would respond to it. The leader was uh, kind of not sure where to go right after. And he would try something. The follower would respond. And they had the element of control where it almost looked intentional. I wouldn't say all of their movements looked intentional the whole time. But I could almost tell that it wasn't a mistake. That's kind of weird to try to explain. But I liked that about their dancing. They were able to do that more than the couple that I thought uh, deserved third place. Now, my first place winner. This was uh, this was an interesting one because I felt it as soon as I saw them, I was like, they're the one. It's like you walk in the room and you kind of scan the room to see the level of dancing if you're a leader. A lot of international instructors do this. You show up to a, a dance and you're at a foreign place, you've never been there before to teach, and immediately you start looking around to find the followers that you think can dance so that you're not like exhausted by the end of the night, right? We all like go there. And sometimes as instructors end up running to that same person and it's awkward like, hey, hey, hey. Uh, no, you go ahead. That's fine. I was just, you know, just noticed that you were standing here and wanted to dance. <laughs> and it's really weird. But when I saw them, this was the thing. I immediately looked through the group and I was looking for who had the control part the most. I was also looking to see how well they could move in different shapes at this level. And this couple could move in, in very irregular shapes more than anybody else, but they also had an element that the other dancers did not have as polished, and that was the element of timing. They had some timing where uh, it nailed perfectly to the music so that it amplified the music to me. I could actually appreciate the song, hear the melody more, based on their way of improvising 
to the music at certain points and deciding to not move at certain points and then deciding to do something different at certain points. And this couple goes to, uh, in the first place goes to the couple who had, he had a gray shirt on and she had like all black, like a all black dress. And I think they were first. Yeah, I think they were first. They were first. And uh, they were my favorite couple. This, 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 is, this is what I look for when uh, I want to put someone in the advanced plus level. And what I see is a sense of peace with the leader, total calm, not afraid of anything that could go wrong with the common moves that he's leading and the language. There's no rushing. There's no anxiety. I didn't see any of that. But the follower, I didn't see her taking gigantic steps. That's one of my biggest things that I look for. Because guess what? If you take gigantic steps, and we talk about this in our five-hour course called The Art of Following. If you take big steps, there are implications with that, that that make everything go wrong as a follower. You take big steps, guess what? The intentionality of what was happening can't happen. Because now, the follower might go further then expect it for the leader, and then the leader has to abdicate what the intentions were to make sure that the follower doesn't get hurt. And if he does that correctly, the follower won't even know if there's anything wrong. And so in essence, the leader can do an entire dance and not be actually leading with intention, but just kind of recovering the situation. And the follower is just totally happy, like, I can dance with you, but I can't dance with anybody else. (laughs) Well, it just simply means that In this case, he's being a gentleman. And I'm not saying she uh, took big steps, but I did not see her doing that a lot. And that was great because that allowed them to work as one body, sharing energy at different points. And I did see some of the followers kind of take big steps sometimes. And that can make it a little frustrating when you're trying to share the same amount of energy from one side of the body to the next. And, you know, they give this little amount and the follower gives this amount by taking big steps, which implies they're going further than what was asked for. There's a lot of unnecessary entanglements can take place when you're social dancing. So this couple, they had massive amounts of control in unconventional shapes. They had the most diversity with their shapes, which alluded to the confidence that they both had in remaining vulnerable, sharing energy with each other. But I also saw the timing parts with the music that made me appreciate the music and their dancing at the same time. So that's my order, folks. They were number one and uh, they win the universe today. (laughs) So what do you think? Who do you think should have won this competition? I noticed that the audience cheered for certain things that I didn't cheer for. And I think it's interesting that that takes place sometimes. Uh, when I was a brand new dancer or <clears throat> someone who didn't know about swing, I was cheering for tuck turns. I didn't even know what the moves were. And, and sometimes the audience might cheer for their favorite people. Sometimes the audience might cheer for um, the underdog. You know, someone's shoe comes off, they slip and, you know, land on their head. And then the person starts doing like head spins. They do the splits and get back up. Everybody's like, yay! Right? Even though the person botched the entire move. So I don't know all the reasons why the audience yells and screams, but I did notice that the people were responding to certain individuals who were doing things. And I think that's great. Being able to capture an emotional response from the audience is that cherry on top that I look for. But in this case, I only had to judge by two of the the qualities that I look for in awarding people the top three spots course that third element i don't think anybody had it and that was that creativity the move that we've not seen or the movement that we've seen done in a surprising way that is unfamiliar which means it's surprising which is kind of redundant but you know what i mean so um that's what i say guys let me know who you thought should have won this at swing at berlin 2020 Uh, in the comment section. If you guys are working on Jack and Jill's and you're at this level, you wanna know how to get into those advanced levels, there are certain things that people look for. Not all the judges say it the same way, but they all mean the same thing. They see through what you're doing and they're trying to access the thing that we all need in order for us to dance together, regardless of what our styles are. (coughs) So I break a lot of these things down 
uh, in my school. Those are those objective things that I want you to be totally confident on and not have to always feel like you got to get the validation from a teacher to understand these things. Yes, I'm a teacher. I can tell you, but you can get them done and understand them within like 45 minutes. The hard part is not the knowledge of what needs to be done. The hard part is the processing of that knowledge and then obtaining the wisdom through that process to be able to keep things simple when it comes to fixing yourself. Once you've done that, then you're going to be able to embellish those fundamental things that will allow you uh, to develop your own style. And that's what's most important is ultimately leaving a unique mark so generations in the future will look back at our time and say, wow, they've actually improved upon the original generation's art form. And I'm super excited to learn from them. So there you go, folks. Um, check out some of my free courses below if you want to just get a taste of what our school is like and taste some of the creativity that I provide every single week for our uh, community. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of uh, different things, different ideas that I come up with, social dancing. And I just love sharing that stuff. That's that's what I do. So let me know uh, what you guys thought about this one. Swing at Berlin in the comment section. If I don't see you guys' comments uh, in this particular video, hopefully I get a chance to see your comments in another reaction video or see you in one of my classes online. Take care.